afternoon, John. Wanted to ask you about field goal kicking. How confident are you guys in both of those guys? And did one of the two separate themselves over those 15 practices? Hey, Chris, how you doing? Um, you know, I, I'm comfortable with both of them. I think they both have a lot of ability and potential. Uh, you know, I thought we had a very solid spring as a, as a specialist group. Uh, you know, to be honest, coming out of spring, no one has really separated themselves. Uh, if you look at their stats, uh, they're almost identical. Uh, so, you know, they're, we actually had our, our meetings with the players post-spring, and, and the message to both those guys is continue to compete, uh, and we'll see how it all plays out. You know, I, you would like to be able to go into the season and be able to name a guy that, you know, you feel confident is going to be the guy for the long term, but um, we'll see how that goes. You know, someone's got to have to take control of the job, and, and uh, you know, I, we'll see how that, you know, if that happens and when that happens, but uh, we're going to let them continue to compete and battle it out. Hey coach, how, how did they how did they do on those in the practice game winning kick type situations during the spring? Yeah, so we did a you know so we did a game winning kick scenario at the end of six of the practices. Uh, overall, as a group, we were five out of six. Uh, one of them was three for three, the other one was two for three. So you know I I'll kind of keep that in house. But um, you know I thought as a you know as a as a group five out of six those kind of pressure situations. I thought they responded pretty well to the environment. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Hey, Brian, how are you? I'm good, thanks. So I wanted to ask about Alex Mastromano, I guess maybe his growth, uh, what you've seen from him since uh, when he first got on campus to, I guess, now going through through the spring. Where has he improved and where does he still have to get better at? Well, you know, Alex is super talented. So everything that, that he went through last uh, fall and through the season, it was really the first time he experienced all those things in his, his athletic career. You know, he had never really played uh, in, in a, that kind of setting or organized football before. Um, so, you know, his growth was continuous throughout the course of the year, but really going into this offseason, the focus was, uh, you know, honing in on the fine details, his ball placement, his accuracy, uh, his footwork, and I thought he made pretty significant strides as spring went. You know, I thought the first scrimmage he might have been pressing and struggling a little bit. There was also some wind, uh, you know, associated with that day, but I thought the, the second scrimmage in the spring game, uh, he hit the ball really, really well. And uh, you know, if he he can be a weapon for us if if uh, he continues to track the way he's tracking. Hey coach, hope you're doing well. Um, my question is last year you set the tone right off the bat with field goal blocking, field goal defense. How have you seen that play out so far in spring, and how have you set the tone for what you want to see in 2021? Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. So we, we call that unit our field goal block unit. We call it our pride unit. And part of the reason why we call it pride is we really feel like that is an identity uh, marker for our football team, that the way we compete on that unit, whether it's on a PAT or whether it's on a field goal block, is going to tell us a lot about who we are as a football team. So, uh, you know, in the spring it's a little harder to gauge because – uh, there's there's a lot fewer game type reps uh, where it's full speed all out, but it, I thought the competition was good when we did go full speed, and we need to keep growing on that as we get into the to the uh, fall. So you know that continues to be an identity for us. With regards to kick returns, punt returns, do you guys feel pretty good about who you expect to be the guys handling those roles, as well as guys in front of them with how they're blocking? doing the job that's being asked of them to spring a big play, big play in that situation. Yeah, a big, uh, big focus of our spring was both our return units. Uh, I felt like, you know, coming out of last fall, you know, our, both our punt and our, and our kickoff coverage uh, was, was really solid. We didn't have the – we didn't – our return units weren't the weapons they should have been. And uh, so there was a lot of fundamental focus uh, both on our punt pressure and our kickoff return units uh, just to get better at the techniques and fundamentals of, of blocking. And then our return guys, they got reps every single day. Uh, I do feel like we have some guys that can be weapons back there. Uh, Travis J, Corey Wren, uh, Jamie Robinson, uh, Keyshawn Help. All those guys got, got a bunch of reps, Ja'Kai Douglas. Uh, so, you know, I, I think we'll have the people that can do it. Um, it's a matter of us being able to put it all together. We, we got to watch you guys run that drill a lot where you kind of, it's like a, you have a gunner and somebody going, or not a gunner, but just somebody coming down on coverage and, and a guy running with him to try to get in front of him to hold him up. 
is that drill more about technique or effort? I guess it's a combination of both, but, but what makes guys successful in that drill? Well, no, so the two-on-two -two, uh, punt versus punt pressure compete drill, it's both. I mean, it's, it's obviously the effort that, that you want to, you know, you want to compete to win the drill. Um, but it's the techniques and fundamentals that allow you to have success within the drill. So, you know, from a pump pressure standpoint, we're working at the line of scrimmage, uh, making sure we're using our feet, trying to delay the release the best of our ability. And then it puts us in real life situations at the end of a punt return. You know, how you finish the play and what techniques you use to finish. And then from a coverage standpoint, it's about your release, your ability to stack and then get on top of whoever's trying to block you and put them in an unblockable situation. So, uh, you know, I, there's so much to, to learn from every rep because it is full speed and it does isolate two people at a time, you know. So, uh, you know, you, you get a lot of quality work and it, it, the competition aspect is, is what makes it really cool because we keep track of every rep, of every competition, who wins and who loses, and the guys get into it. They want, they want to win. And, uh, you know, so, so I think that adds a, a whole other element to it. At defensive end, Derek McClendon is someone who had to take a lot of reps this spring. I guess, how do you, how do you evaluate how he did with that increased, that increased role? You know, Derek, I, th I thought Derek made significant progress through the course of the spring. Um, probably the thing that hurt him, probably stymied his development as a player as much as anything, was not having a spring ball as a redshirt freshman. You know, he didn't, he didn't have that opportunity to grow and learn, and then you get, kind of get thrown into it in the fall. And, you know, there were some things that he might have not been ready for. Um, and I thought, I thought just his understanding of, of his role, how he needs to play, his strengths, what are his weaknesses, and how do you offset them? I thought I just thought he did a really nice job growing as a player throughout the course of the spring, and uh, you know we need to see continued growth. You know, we had like I said earlier, we had an exit meetings, and you know my message to him was I saw significant, significant progress, but we're nowhere near a finished product. So you know, continue to grow, continue to learn, continue to get stronger in the weight room. Uh, it's going to be a critical off season for him, but I was really pleased with his progress. Going back to um, some of those special teams drills, uh, thinking back to last year, it seems like there were less block in the back type penalties uh, on returns, at least just anecdotally, I didn't look it up. That's been an issue at times uh, through, at this program. How did you guys feel like you guys did in that area? And then also, you know, w like what's the key to success in that area? Well, you know, for, for one, uh, the no penalties, don't beat yourself mentality is, is preached every single day by our staff and our program. Uh, I was super proud of the way we did a year ago. As a matter of fact, on the punt returns and on the kickoff returns, we had one penalty on the season. Um, and that was kind of a silly holding call that was uh, totally unnecessary. So we had one in action uh, penalty throughout the course of the year. I, would, I don't know if they keep stats. I'd find it hard pressed that that, that wasn't towards the top of, of the country, if not the top. Uh, but I totally attribute that to the fundamentals and techniques that the guys buy into. Um, you know, we talk about having tight hands and tight elbows. So you're not going to get holding calls if your hands are in tight, but if your hands get outside the framework of your body, that's when penalties happen. We talk a lot about your body position relative to where the returner is. And if you're not in a position to make the block, don't put yourself in a bad spot by hitting somebody in the back. And those drills that you saw us do, those reinforce those ideas. That, that gives us real life uh, ability to coach those situations. There's times that the best block is to not make the block uh, because it's going to create a penalty. So, you know, the more full speed competitive drill work and the more times we can put the, our guys in those situations, the better off we are. But you definitely saw that translate a year ago because there was just the one holding penalty on, on a punt return. I'm going to add on Hey, Coach. Uh, joining us a little bit late, so I, hope, I don't know if anybody's asked you about this, but Keir Thomas, I, I know he wasn't able to, to play a lot this spring, obviously. Uh, I don't know if, if you guys have plans for if he's going to play on the inside or the outside, but at least uh, were you able to make any sort of, uh, I guess, evaluations of him during the spring? Uh, you know, the biggest evaluation we were able to make was just how he conducted himself in the meeting room and around the other guys. You know, the thing that impressed me so much about Keir is he was able to bring a veteran presence into the meeting room. Uh, I think he's really, really football savvy. Um, just 
in our conversations and talking through our defense and our install. He understands the big picture of how the game needs to be played. Uh, I'm excited for him to be able to get healthy and, and get out there because I think he's going to provide you know a leadership role because of his veteran presence. Uh, I think he commands some respect in the room, and I was really impressed by how quickly he's picking things up from a playbook perspective. After 15 practices with Jermaine Johnson, what maybe surprised you about him or was just unexpected for what you guys hoped he would be when you recruited him? Uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't go in with a lot of, of uh, preconceived expectations, but I would say the thing that, that might have surprised me a little bit was how physical he is in the run game. Uh, you know, I knew he had, had you know, some, some top-end pass rush ability, uh, but his physical presence in the run game was, was impressive. Uh, he brought it every single day. Uh, there was nothing finesse about his game from a pass rush or a run game perspective. And, you know, without knowing him, you know, my, my thought was that he was going to be a, a dynamic pass rusher, but, but his physicality in the run game was, was really impressive. And, uh, you know, I know Josh Farmer's moved inside, um, but he's a guy that you obviously recruited. Um, it seemed like every time we watched you guys play, and especially in the spring game, he's making plays across the line of scrimmage. How rare is that for you know, a true freshman in his first spring and early rolling at that position? And, and are you guys maybe even a little surprised by how well he's fit in? I was, I was super pleased with, with the way Josh performed this spring. Uh, I think probably one of the harder transitions to make, uh, especially in a mid-year early, is, is up front, especially in the interior, because it's just it's a different ball game, you know, for an 18-year-old that, that's going against you know, veteran, you know, offensive lineman. And, and uh, he never looked out of place. You know, obviously he didn't win every rep that he had. And there were moments that he had an opportunity to learn from things that happened to him. But he, he, he fights. He's tough. Um, he works hard. And, and he makes plays. So, uh, you know, I, w I was really impressed with him as a, as a mid-year enrollee, true freshman, coming in, holding his own, and not looking out of place. There was never a time that – that you looked at it and said, oh, wow, that, that looks like a, a high school senior. No, I mean, he, he fought and battled and competed with, with everybody, and it was impressive to watch. You guys announced, or Florida State announced today, that there were going to be camps starting back in June, and, and including like a kicking camp, I guess. Two-part question. Of one, how difficult was the past year to not be able to evaluate see guys at various positions in person? And two, Nice. How nice is it going to be just to be back and, and being able to coach your high school kids again and getting that element in the summertime? Yeah, no, the, the evaluation piece is super critical for us in, in every way. You know, I, we, we want, especially especially in a kicking position, you want to be able to have hands-on uh, opportunities to see guys work. Uh, you know, this last season was, was difficult for everyone across the country from an evaluation perspective because you lost the, the piece with camp, obviously, but you also lost the in-person evaluation that you would normally get by going to a spring practice or a game in the fall. And, uh, you know, so everything was off, off film. And uh, in some cases, uh, there was no in-person at all. You know, there was, we signed uh, three defensive ends that I've, I've never met in person. Uh, so, you know, it, it just, it's, it's unique. It's not unique to Florida State. It's just unique to the situation that, that uh, we went through a year ago as, as a, a you know, I, obviously it's the world, you know, transitioning. But um, from a football perspective, it, it, everyone was it was in the same boat. But it'll be interesting to see, you know, two or three down the, years down the line when we look back at this, um, you know, and assess the recruiting from this past year. Um, it was absolutely absolutely challenging. But I'm excited about the guys we're bringing in. Thank you, guys.